Hello, I'm Elaine Winter. I'm one of the associate artists that work as a team at Nottingham Lakeside Arts and we work for uh, visitors that come into the gallery and also into the University of Nottingham Museum. And I was due to do a workshop over Easter with families about Roman theatre masks and we were going to make them out of clay. However, because we're staying home and staying safe over the Easter holidays, we decided it would be a good idea to give you some ideas of things that you could do at home but with a similar theme. So there's two ways you can make a Roman theatre mask at home and I'm going to show you two types that you can make. But before we do that we're going to have a quick chat about Roman theatre because it's very different to the sort of theatre that we go to now where we go to a performance and we sit there quietly unless we're asked to um, do anything in response and then we leave after we've applauded and we will talk about the performance on the way home perhaps but during Roman theatre the performances were very long and people talked during them, they walked around. Amphitheatres, some of them in Roman times were huge as well, massive, massive theatres and yet they didn't have a lot of actors so they had a quite a small team of actors usually and actors had a very low status in Roman times so some of them were slaves who'd shown that they had talent for acting and earned their freedom through that um, but there were also um, actors who did multiple parts during the performances so they had to change costumes quite quickly and because the theatres were so big, the amphitheatres, the distance that they had to portray what they were showing was so, so great. They wore masks to show the emotion of the character, the expression of the character that they were trying to portray. So that's what we're looking at today. And here's some pictures which you can download, which show you some of the exaggerated expressions that they use. So they often had masks that were to do with comedy and also tragedy. So some of them look very shocked like that and some of them look very funny. So we're going to look at those for inspiration and you can do your own research for some more as well. And we're going to make um, masks out of things which hopefully you'll have in your home without needing to go to the shops because it's difficult to go to the shops at the minute. So something like a cereal box for cardboard is brilliant. You'll need a pencil, a pair of scissors and then to add colour felt-tip pens would be brilliant if you've got a good set of paints that would also work really really well. And the first thing to do to make a very simple mask is literally to open up your cardboard cereal box or similar cardboard if you've got white cardboard at home that you've got for crafting supplies great. Inside you've got an untreated um, cardboard surface whereas the other side has got paint and ink on it and it's often quite shiny. Very very difficult to paint on or do any work on. So we're going to use a nice big rectangular space within our cardboard box and we're going to draw an oval about the size of a face there. Now this is where your ruler could be quite useful because the width of a face and the length of a face is sometimes a bit difficult to get right. So as a guide, and I put this on the instructions, about 16 centimetres across the widest part of your face, which is here, and about 21 centimetres from the top of your head to your chin would give you a good oval. So you can measure across 16 and mark that on. I'm going to try and do this so that you can see it because I'm going to press quite hard. And then you can do 21 centimetres. It sounds quite precise, but if you do it slightly different to this, it's fine. And then we're just going to join those up to make a nice oval shape for a face. Don't worry if it's not very precise and the reason why I don't want you to worry is because all of these masks had really interesting characterful uh, features that were added on so things like big beards and prominent eyebrows and this sort of thing so the oval is just the basic thing that you can add things to. Now you need to have the eyes marked on as a kind of way of looking at where everything else is on the face. So about a third of the way down you want to add two dots and they need to be about seven centimetres apart so the two dots we're going to measure 
and put those on seven or eight seven and a half seven or eight something like that and you have two dots and then you're going to draw a little circle around the dots like that that looks a bit weird but you're going to have that and then if you want to wear your mask which would be fun you need to cut those out before you do too much more work on it now cutting out cardboard scissors is quite tricky because you've got to push the scissors through so if you have a grown-up who can help you with that and also for the grown-up be careful because pushing through don't have your hand underneath otherwise you could accidentally cut your hand so do it uh, as sensibly and as carefully as you can and get some help from somebody if you need it so you need to cut those out then you can start adding the other thing to say is don't cut out the oval yet you'll see why in a minute so leave it on the cardboard then you can start adding the features of your choice now the one that I chose to do is that one in the corner there which would have been used for comedy big laughing gentleman there and I decided to start adding some nice exaggerated features so quite an interesting nose prominent eyebrows creases on the forehead nice big laughing mouth okay so now at that stage if you want to carry on and finish that off this would have had the eyes cut out I haven't cut it out on this one yet um, you can then add your colour colour it in or use paint a word about paint uh, watercolours won't work very well on here because they won't have enough density of colour to show through the cardboard so you might want to use something like acrylic paints or a really good quality ready mixed paint will work better otherwise you might be better off sticking with your felt tips and then when you've got everything done then you can cut it out but perhaps leave a little bit extra at the side so that if you wanted to add some elastic to go around the back so you could wear it or some ribbon that would be quite a fun mask to do so that's one way of doing it okay so that's the easy way if you want to make it a bit more of a challenge for you or a longer project because you feel like I've got a bit more time at the moment you do need somewhere that you can have it set up for maybe three days four days where you can keep putting it back there to dry so you need to check with who you live with if that's okay and you need different materials so you will also need something like newspaper or scrap paper so scrap paper is also going to be fine you would need something to make because this mask is going to become more of a 3d mask so you'd also need something to make a papier-mâché mix out of now papier-mâché mix if you've got pva glue at home and it's okay to use it it's made with two parts pva and one part water really mix it well that works brilliantly I would always put it in a tub with a lid on if you've got a tub in recycling or something like that that you can use with a lid perfect because then if you're going to be using it over several days you can put the lid on it or keep it from going dry if you haven't got pva at home but you have got some flour and it's okay to use it but do ask because flour is quite difficult to get hold of a bit of plain flour some water this is just tap water i'm just using the bottle to show you and a little bit of salt and you basically need and i've when i made mine i used a uh, measuring cup because you can get a scoop of flour you need equal parts of flour and water scoop of flour then fill that up with the water into a container mix it really really well and then add a good heat teaspoon or something like that of salt and mix that in really well the reason we put salt in is it stops it going mouldy because it's quite warm at the minute so that will just stop it going mouldy all right so then what you end up with is quite a gloopy mix which is flour and water paste that's all it is and that's papier-mâché that was done for years like that before we had pva glue you also need to cut your newspaper up into strips ready to go and maybe have some white paper as well so scrap white paper if you have the uh, option of doing that but to build it up initially before you go into the papier mache you need to start forming features that stand out without actually putting lots and lots of glue on and the easiest way to do this is with scrunched up 
newspaper and this is the thing that would be brilliant if you have it is masking tape so all tape will work to a certain extent but masking tape is just very easy to use and it's one of the best things you can have at home uh, for doing art projects really so if there's some in the you know for decorating at home that'd be great check if it's okay to use it um, and the easiest way to build up your features into a more 3d form is to use small amounts of newspaper crunch them into shape or you can twist them into like longer shapes now if you just leave them like that without any tape on they will want they will want to expand into their original shape so then you have to tape them with a bit of masking tape and then when you've got your shapes then so you could have like a long shape like this that you could use for say the beard part of the beard to build up the, the kind of form of the beard then you just tape it down and I hope you can see the, the, the nose and that brow is just taped down um, then when all your features are taped down roughly and you've got the kind of basic um, shape that's when you can start building up with papier mache so here's one in progress um, this hasn't got all the layers on yet I would probably do say three layers of papier mache would be good because what you do with the papier mache is taking it from looking like that which still is really obvious where the tape is is to putting layers over to smooth it and make it look more like a well-formed mask and I'll just show you with the papier mache all you do is use your paste mix and you soak what will happen you soak it in but it's actually so gloopy you'll get more than you need you'll get like quite a lot of gloop with it and then you smooth it on and you can actually use some of that as well just to smooth it and add to the kind of whole moulding of it really because you're kind of smoothing out and moulding the shape that you want so you could build up some interesting hair the prominent eyebrows the nose the nostrils I would probably build up that beard make it bigger when you get towards the end of it leave each layer overnight to dry so don't put lots and lots on at a time that was done yesterday and it's nice and dry um, when you get to the final layer you could use something like scrap white paper so this is actually a, a school worksheet which you might have some of these at home uh, when you're finished with them you can if it's okay to cut it up you can cut it up into strips and it's only printed on one side so I'm using um, that just as my final layer and that's really good as the final layer because it will white on the upper layer so use the non-printed side for the upper layer of the scrap paper and then you've got a nice even white surface that you can add paint on whereas this is obviously different colors of newspaper but if you do it all white that'll be easier to paint um, and then when it's dry leave it to dry again really well before you paint it uh, you can paint it beautiful bright colors so if you look at some of the examples they did have quite bold paint work on it and that was so that again people could see it from the back of the amphitheatre the other thing a top tip is to leave it on quite a big bit of cardboard so this is actually a wheat fix box and I've left slightly wider bits so that as you can see it's a bit messy you get a bit splattery when you're doing papier mache your hands will get very gloopy so you need to uh, be able to clean them up quite easily um, and only cut it out when it's completely dry and you've done all your paint so then you can be a bit messy with your paint and then just cut out where you want it to go at the end but maybe leave a little bit here and here and the elastic bit to go on so that you can wear it so that gives you two ideas you can either make a very simple one cut that out felt tips paint if you have a bit more time got space to do it don't mind making a bit more mess you can make a papier mache one um, 
and add extra things to it. If more than one of you is making a mask in your house, you could do some acting as well. You could wear them and do a bit of research about Roman theatre uh, or just make up your own your own little theatre production and do that. That would be a fantastic idea. Um, have a great time doing it and hope to see you at Lakeside when this is all open again and we can we can be together again. Thank you.